Hello and welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use similar triangles to find a missing side. Now the example I'm going to show you is actually a little bit more complicated than normal because we have triangles embedded into another triangle. Now to make this easier for me to talk about the different parts of the triangle, I'm going to label the vertices A, B, and C, and I'll also label this point right here D. Now what I'm going to do first is to actually use this big triangle, A, B, C. And I'm going to say that actually it's similar to A, D, C. Now the reason that we know that is that there's a right angle here and A is common to both of the triangles. So I'm actually going to take um, the smaller triangle and I'm going to flip it around. So A is still going to be on the bottom here, but I'm going to flip this D to the top to be that right angle, and then B will still be here. So we can see that A is the same as that A. So therefore, we now know that C over here is the same as this angle B. So now we know that triangle A, B, C is similar to triangle A, D, B. Now what I'm going to do is not even looking at the triangle, because I know that these are similar, I'm going to write the proportion. So AB divided by AD equals BC divided by DB, and that equals AC divided by AB. So we're now we're going to substitute the numbers or even the variable into our expression. So we have AB. Now we actually don't know what the length of AB is, so I'm just going to rewrite this as AB. AD we can see in the diagram is 8, so I'm going to substitute that in, equals BC, and again we don't know what that is, so I'm going to put BC, divided by DB, which, oh, we can see that there's a variable X, so we'll put X here, equals AC, and AC is that whole entire length, so that's going to be 8 plus 18, which is 26. And then again we have AB, which we don't know what that is. So I'm going to put A, B here again. Now this is a problem because the value that we're trying to find is X, which is here. But we don't know the number above, but we also don't know any of the other fractions as well, where we know the numerator and also the denominator. So let's take a look at what we can do. <coughs> Excuse me. So like I said before, we know that angle A is equal to angle A. B here is equal to angle C. So the smaller one and the smaller triangle, um, these are equal. So if I flip them back, I now know that since this part here is B, inside here, this is also B. And these are equal because it's actually the same triangle, but it's flipped. So now knowing that, since we have two right, sorry, two right angles and angle A, B, D, this one right here, is equal to angle C on the outside here, we now know that angle A must be equal to this angle here, C, B, D, because that is the third angle in the triangle. So now I can actually create another similar triangle. This time, I'm gonna say that triangle A, D, B which is this triangle over here, is similar to triangle B, D, C, which is the triangle on this side over here. All right, so now knowing that, let's write our proportions again. So AD divided by BD equals DB divided by DC equals AB, divided by BC. So let's fill in the numbers or variables that we know again. So AD here is 8 divided by BD, which is X, equals DB, which is X again, divided by DC, which is 18, equals AB, which we don't know, and BC, we also don't know. Now this isn't a problem though, because we have these two fractions here which are equal and although it might seem complicated but what we can do now is we can 
cross multiply. Now cross multiplying just means that we're actually multiplying both of these numbers and I'm actually going to erase my box. I'm going to multiply this side by 18x and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side of the fraction. Now the reason that I'm doing this is so that I can cross off the x's on my left and on my right I actually cross off the 18s. So that means that on my left side I have 18 times 8 and that's actually 144 equals. On my right side I have x times x and that's x squared. And this is good because I know that x has to be 12 since 12 squared or 12 times 12 is equal to 144. So x is equal to 12. Now like I said this was a more complicated um, similar triangles question so let's take a look at another one uh, which is an application but it's actually going to be a lot easier. All right, so when we are working with applications, um, set up a proportion for these problems. Um, now, the units don't necessarily have to be the same, but you'll see what I mean when I set them up. Okay, so I can see that I have um, a monument, and the monument's shadow is 20.5 meters. And the length of Candace's shadow, where she's standing right here, is 410 centimeters. Now, she's 120 centimeters tall. So using this information, we're going to calculate the height of the monument. Now, we have a big triangle here with the monument and the shadow. So I'm going to draw another triangle here, a smaller one, to represent Candace and her shadow. So this is going to be 120 centimeters and 410 centimeters here. Now, we know that these triangles are similar because... They both are at right angles. Now we're going to assume that the monument and Candace are standing up straight to create the right angle. And down here on the bottom, these are the same angle. And then finally, we have the angle at the top. And these have to be the same because they are the third angle of the triangle. All right, so now we can set up the proportion. And this time I'm not going to use the letters. So what we can do is we are going to say um, that the height of the monument is going to be x. Okay, so then we have x, and then over to the smaller triangle, that be, would be 120 centimeters equals 2. So we go back to the big triangle, and we're going to use this big bottom length here is 20.5. And then we go back to the smaller triangle, and that bottom length is 410. Now, if you want to keep track of the units, it might be helpful to put in the centimeters and centimeters here and the meters on the top. Now, it doesn't matter that we have the units mixed matched because that means that when we solve for x, the x will actually be in meters because it has to match the 20.5 meters, which is also on the top of the other fraction. So here we're going to now times both sides by 120. So that the 120s cross off on the left side, and then we're just left with x. So x is equal to 20.5 times 120, all divided by 410, which you can type into your calculator. And this works out really nice. The monument is only 6 meters. Now the other thing that you could have done if you like cross multiplying is to take x times 410, so it's going to be 410x, and that will equal in the other direction multiplied, which is 120 times 20.5. And then we're going to divide both sides by 410, and you notice you actually get the same expression over here. So x still equals this. So in this case, because x is in the numerator, it's actually easier just to multiply by the denominator on both sides. The denominators will cancel off, and then you'll have x all isolated ready, and you just have to then calculate um, the expression on the right side. 
And that's how you use similar triangles to solve a problem.